Hey everybody, John Bernakovich here with All Points Design as well as Neil Bertrando of RT Permaculture. And I never get tired of saying Bertrando because it's an amazing last name. Again, today we're here with the Oregon State University Permaculture Design Certificate course and we're talking about assignment six. We're talking, oh, that's not true. We're talking about assignment 5B. We're talking about the questionnaire, <laughs> the first part of the questionnaire. So questionnaires are important or interactions with our clients are important. If we are our own clients, we can skip this a little bit. We can not think about it as much, but it's not something to be skipped. So questionnaires or understanding the objectives of a client are imperative to understanding the direction that the site is moving. The questionnaire that's provided to you is a great place to start uh, and a terrible place to stop. There's lots of ways to interview, lots of good questions to ask, to start to pull out different understandings of a site. Personally, myself and I, I think Neil a little bit uh, use a tool from holistic management called holistic context to understand the true objectives of the site and to help start to build decision making capacity into clients and into a site, uh, which is usually paired with questionnaires or paired with understandings of the site. So this is, again, an observational tool, usually about the person understanding what they want out of the site. And again, design is interesting. It's sort of three main circles in a Venn diagram. We've got the the client's desires and goals and all of that. We've got the site potential. And then we also have the understanding regionality of it. And in between the three of those uh, overlaps, that's what's possible within a site. So um, a person might really, really, really want a date palm and they might live in Kentucky. And while you might get very close to a date palm, you're not necessarily going to get it. So part of this is understanding the overlap of what people want and what's actually available to them. We're going to show you a couple of examples here, but Neil, did you want to say anything particularly about the questionnaire or any of the requirements? Um, I mean, the requirements are just fill it out. So uh, don't, don't leave anything out. Uh, often what I will recommend is that people do some sort of formatting to clearly delineate the questions and the responses to the questions. A simple graphic communication technique, bold, underline, something like that is always helpful. And if you have multiple respond, um, respondents, if you have multiple people within a family, just make sure to color code them or to give them good labels. So it's easy for us to go, oh, this is mom, this is dad, this is grandma, this is grandpa. These are all the individuals that are there. Or if you're working with multi-stakeholders, this is the board of trustees. These are the people who are working the land. These are the interns. So we get a sense of all those different individuals. We're gonna show you a couple of examples here. As long as my mouse decides to come back, it did. We're going to take a look at a couple of examples here. One of them specifically is going to be, uh, again, we've seen this before. This is a public park in Calgary called McIntosh Park. Great student, great assignment. And again, because this was a public conversation, they went through and they did a survey to understand what the individuals that used that park wanted. So they went out, they would say, how would you rate the park on the following for accessibility, for safety, for playground safe? Um, then they went into the aesthetics, the spaces to gather, maintenance, natural beauty. So they gave a big overarching conversation, uh, three date words, describe uh, Macintosh Park currently, blah is one of my favorites. That really conveys the emotion that people have there. Sad, poorly treated, dead grass, unintentional, underused. Uh, and then of course, contrasting, peaceful, welcoming, fun. What's the best thing currently? So always, this is something I do a lot with community design charrette. You know, what's the thing you love about this space? What's the thing you absolutely don't want changed? Because that's usually where you start to get public interface problems when you take away something that people really love. Uh, what's the worst thing? Uh, and sometimes it's general, sad and underused. Um, and then it's really specific, like playground is old. I highly disrock, dislike the rock face, really specific. And you can correlate that with a number of respondents. Uh, Describe how you'd like it to be in the future. Um, what specific changes, what specific uh, suggestions? If you could change anything, what would that be? Um, what would you like to be contacted? And then here's what I'd like to see everybody do is make sure that your questionnaire is into your portfolio. Say it again. Make sure your questionnaire is into your portfolio. Don't make it a sad standalone assignment that gets neglected from your portfolio. Take, as this person obviously did, if you can take a look at the top here, they obviously took 
um, a screenshot of some kind of word processor and put it directly into the PDF. Great to see. So they just filled it out as normal. Then they went down through and put it all together. The one thing that, as Neil was saying, uh, really nice to see, good to see bolded in terms of the question or some kind of delineation between the question and the answer. So for us, we can quickly go through and see what's going on. The more we have to hunt, the less time we have to actually apply design to these assignments. Neil, any uh, pieces to add to this one? Yeah, um, I wanna just riff on what you just said where if you're bolding all these uh, questions or items or sometimes I'll put stuff into a table, anything <clears throat> that makes the data easy to review is not just easy for us to review, it also means it's easy for you to come back and use it. And the more easy the information is to use, the more likely you are, you are to use it. So this isn't just for us, this is also for you to continue to improve your <clears throat> site assessment, your site understanding, your ability to leverage that time and energy you put into it to actually inform your design and communicate it to others. Um, also, you have like the, the best and the worst examples up there on the questionnaire. A lot of times I'll ask people what they absolutely must have and what they absolutely do not want. So that puts some bounds on the overall design process and the desired outcomes for the site. And um, it's ideal to do this before you get to a site because sometimes your absolute must-haves or uh, absolutely do not wants uh, aren't compatible with a site itself. Mm -hmm. So as, as Javin mentioned, um, I usually like to think it through from the perspective of uh, a site analysis is first we analyze ourself and what our needs are, and then we try to find a site that matches those. And then we analyze a site for what, it, what its capacity or capability is, and hopefully our desired outcomes match the capacity or capability of the site. And if they don't, then we have to temper our, our personal um, desired outcomes and balance them with that. And sometimes that can be kind of a, a rude awakening, um, especially when we're coming at, at the permaculture concept with a you know, really eyes opening type of um, experience where there's so much potential, but th that potential is also limited in, in many ways by the sites themselves, not just climatically, but also from a regulatory standpoint. So creating those bounds and those edges which we're doing through the, the questionnaire and the site assessment process, gives us a much cleaner and clearer set of design imperatives and drivers for, for the site design. So that's what we're trying to get at with all this analysis is to get some, some clean boundaries and, and drivers for the design process itself. And Neil brings up a really good point. Uh, constraints are a wonderful thing to find. We're looking for constraints. constraints allows the design to come out of our conversations instead of applying to. And one of my probably biggest critiques of permaculture as a movement and as a design process is that there's a lot of picking up something off of the permaculture shelf and stamping it onto a site, taking cougar culture, taking uh, pasture management, and just throwing it onto a site thinking, well, this is good over here, this is good over here. It's not the way to move you have to find constraints, you have to allow design to come to you. And it's really running design through a number of filters. You can think of zones as a filter, you can think of sectors as a filter, you can think of the questionnaire as a big filter. And one of the ways that I design now after years of doing this is I run clients through a pre-feasibility and a feasibility portion of design before we get to concept and design. Because a lot of what people want is not feasible for their site. And coming to a positive negative, which is great, you want that, it's not doable on this site. Permaculture is not a, anything you want, you can have it. It's a way of taking an ecological mindset with a human imperative to find how can we be sustainable in the long run and go beyond that to be regenerative. So sometimes people come into a permaculture design course with this idea that we can do everything with anything. We can do a lot. And it's not to say we can't, but we really need to be aware of constraints and work within those constraints. And one of those constraints is regulation boundaries, what you can and cannot do underneath the water act within your area, what you can and cannot do under the zoning of your area. Just understand that there's lots of battles to fight in the world, fighting the battle of a specific zoning regulation. If you really love it and you really want it, fine, fair, but that's gonna be a battle. Make no, make no, uh, make no doubts or bones about it. It's gonna be a long fight. And if that's the fight you wanna fight, fantastic. Sometimes if the context of your site doesn't work with you, sometimes it's easier to move you than it is to change the context. 
Neil, I know you've worked with this before, so it's it's not something that from a professional level we are um, strangers to, but definitely from a student perspective, I think a lot of students come to this work with um, castle in the sky expectations of, of permaculture of the design work. I'd like to also uh, riff on that. You know, right here on the, the screen share, um, we have some very clear uh, questions that specify some of these constraints. Uh, the amount of time available for maintaining the property and the initial budget for implementation. So those are, are big filters. I highly recommend you get a clear budget number if you can, an actual dollar value as, um, compared to here where it just kind of says limited personally or th these are identifying sources. Um, if, if it's your personal site specifically, definitely try to get a, a specific dollar number down. Um, but identifying sources of, of budget and funds is, is great as well in this, um, in this assignment. And then the amount of time available for maintaining, I would also say um, developing the property are, are really important. And I would also differentiate between those ideally, how much time do you have for development versus maintenance, because that will be a, a clear filter and guide for how much you try to integrate into the site design. If you only have a couple hours a week, um, then don't, de don't design an extremely intensive site that requires a lot of maintenance. Um, it simplifies the design process too. You know, you can design something that's more clear and open and focuses on a, a few specific yields as opposed to just trying to cram everything you can in, which um, is often done um, in the kind of initial permaculture design uh, phase as you're building your skills. And I, I highly encourage you, less is more. So something that matches your time and money needs as well as um, simplifies things down is often uh, a much more elegant and useful design. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful, Neil. Thank you so much for that. Um, I want to share one more, and I think we'll call. Uh, there we go, and I think we'll call this complete. So, again, wonderful to see the questionnaire in the portfolio. Uh, great to see they've they've reformatted. They've put it into a two-column conversation, so lots of information on the page easy to do with a PDF because of course we don't lose any resolution. We can punch in, we can punch out, we can take a look at these pieces. They've take, they've changed it from the client profile. So who these individuals are to the desired outcomes. I like seeing that delineation. They made it very easy for us to understand what the question was and what the result was, what the answer was. Um, especially if you've got a lot of individuals on this site, um, John Tate, David Tate, Susan Tate, uh, giving us a sense of that lifestyle, very sedentary, very busy, works 25 hours a week. Again, if you find after consulting everybody on the site that they have an hour to put into their site a week and maybe a big push of 10 hours a year, you've got only a few options that you can suggest to them, which is great. It means your project is very simple. <laughs> simple projects are good projects. It doesn't have to be a beautiful photo. I think a lot of people become... Um, Oh man, they, they become seduced by this photo that has everything on it. And I can tell you from a client's perspective, that's overwhelming. One or two things that they know they can manage. And especially when you get to your phasing uh, diagrams and your phasing maps, one or two things per year that you can see and understand, it allows something to be accomplished. So lots of great pieces here that I really appreciated and enjoyed. Very simple, very to the point and easy to understand. Again, title block simple. Here's the assignment. Here's the address, here's the assignment again, here's the person, here's the date. Everything I wanna see on here is, uh, is simple and easy. Neil? Uh, yeah, I think the one thing that you didn't mention that I noticed is it has client desired outcomes continued on the, the line on the right, hmm. which just makes it very clear, okay, this is still desired outcomes. Um, so anything you can do that, that clarifies that makes it easy for us to understand and easy for you to come back and look at and know where you're at. Awesome, awesome. All right, folks, thanks so much for stopping by and talking to us about the questionnaires. You're not talking to us. We're talking to you uh, as I say that and it comes out of my mouth. However, if you put it in the comments or if you connect with us at the OSU PDC, we will be having a conversation. So thanks again, and we will see you at the very next video. Cheers. <laughs>